Are you serious? Hey everybody, welcome to Off Grid with Brad and Kelly. I'm Brad and it's another day in our tiny home. Um, we are preparing lunch. Uh, so we're making a uh, potatoes and green peppers and onions and chicken inside of the uh, solar grill, inside of the solar oven. Um, this is a great way to cook. Uh, it's a way to be completely off the grid. You cut whatever you need, put it in there, and just let it sit until it's done. Now, if you're cooking with a solar oven, we definitely recommend that you have a meat thermometer. If you're going to use, uh, use it for meat, it's really gonna help kind of take the guesswork out of it, and you'll be able to, uh, you know, just sit it in there, go check it every hour, and see where it's at. And you never wanna let it get to a point where uh, you know, you're guessing whether the chicken's done or does the juice run clear? Does it look like it's clear? Because depending on what you put in there as side dishes, it's going to change the color of the juice that comes out of the chicken and it's going to just be more guesswork. So we're doing that. I've got to go help a friend of ours or actually just go up there and see if he needs help. Uh, it's Dave from up the hill. He's the one that helped us get into our tiny home so quick and i uh, going to go return the favor. Now he's an early riser and this is some people are just really early risers. Uh, I wake up early to do the news on full spectrum and then I hit the sack again. Uh, sometimes I stay up all the way until the news and then I hit the sack. Uh, Dave's an early riser so our work schedules are kind of different. Uh, but I'm going to go up there, it's a little bit later now, and see if he needs any help. So I went up to Dave's house. So I went up to Dave's house and uh, today's his day of rest, his Sabbath, so he wasn't doing any work, but we got to talking and we discussed a couple of things that I kind of want your guys' input on. Um, one of those things is perpetual energy. We got to talking about perpetual energy because there are so many ways to create energy, so many ways to get off the grid. And, uh, you know, he has a creek nearby that we were talking about maybe damming up a little bit and trying to get energy to turn a turbine. Um, we talked about solar units and how if you go any with anything except the, uh, the nickel batteries, like the Edison batteries, you're really going to have a tough time, especially if you're going to try to run normal load things off of them. Uh, we talked about wind energy. Then we talked about perpet perpetual energy and also... Uh, hydrogen. So even though today was Dave's Sabbath and I wasn't able to get over there and help him uh, do some work on his cabin, we had a lot of great, uh, you know, fruitful discussions and got into a lot of great topics and some things that I want to know your guys' thoughts about. Uh, and if he decides to go that route and decides to dam up some of that creek or go a little bit um, more towards a turbine or somehow capturing that, would you guys like to see it? I know Dave has tossed up the idea of putting on a, you know, creating a YouTube channel. I think he has a lot of great content, uh, a lot of great things going on in his head. So if you guys would like to see something like that, just please let me or let him know in the comments. He might read them and it, it might give him that next step to say, okay, that might be something that I want to do. So next on my list, uh, I went and I, uh, while I was up there, since he wasn't working today, I borrowed the uh, wireless circular saw from him. And we're going to build out some garden box here in a minute. But I had another to do. Uh, Dave and his wife had a, I believe it was in their 30s, 30, 30 year anniversary, somewhere around there, very close to that. Uh, and so, as you guys know, Kelly and I were in the jewelry industry and we were able to uh, find them and had for them some really pretty stones. Uh, this is a trillion cut quartz. That is just absolutely beautiful. Uh, if you guys haven't seen a trillion cut before, I mean, the trillion cut is just magnificent. Um, so Dave's wife was thinking about wearing that as a necklace and she really loves green. So we were able to find her, uh, you know, pear shaped peridot, maybe for another necklace and two sha pear shaped peridots for earrings. And so today my task, which I'm overdue on as that happens. Uh, today my task was to measure them out with the calipers so that they could get a setting for them and get them worn where beautiful stones should be. They should be worn. Um, so I did that today and now our next step is get on the garden boxes.
Okay, so plans changed a little bit. Uh, we had planned to make the garden boxes today, but we have all of this down pine that we really need to take care of. Uh, you know, as you're as, as you're building out your homestead, you are you're in such a rush to get things done. Uh, you know, you're so, I guess not in a rush, but you're excited to make valid steps, uh, you know, towards your homestead or towards going off grid. But sometimes these little things just have to be done. So we're going to clear out here before we build the garden boxes because this is where we want to put them. This spot here is going to get great light for our garden. Um, and this is just the ideal spot for us. We can look out the window. The kids can come out and do the watering, things like that. And it's nice and close. But this has to be done first. So instead, we decided we were going to recycle some of our wood from the original foundation that we were building that didn't work out um, to the shower house and kind of finish that out. Now, unfortunately, I didn't think of this beforehand. Uh, like I've told you guys, I'm not perfect at this. Give me some logs. I'll build you a log cabin. This is a little bit different. So I didn't think beforehand that if I make a six foot long shower platform, my 12 foot long boards are actually just an inch or two under 12 feet. And so I didn't compensate for that. So I'm gonna have some waste. Uh, I think what we're gonna do is cut them to size for the shower house so that looks good and use the leftovers to build multi sized boxes so we don't just have 12 foot long boxes we'll have you know a three foot long box a, a two foot square a four foot square things like that and that'll be our best way to reuse it so come with us and we're going to go take apart some more foundation Pretty sure car insurance would cover this on a windshield breakage. What do you think? Yeah. Buy a truck, they said. <laughs> now I watched a video, and that is the officially approved method of transportation for lumber. And don't let anybody tell you anything different because they said it on YouTube and that's, you can't say it if it's not true. Now is when there's a little warning on the bottom of saying, do not try this at home. So it's time to start a fire. Uh, the sun's going down pretty soon. And you know, we were talking about how we have all this pine brush everywhere that we're getting rid of. One of the reasons that we haven't just gotten rid of it on a massive scale is that the pine tree is really a perfect fire starter. Now it has so much resin inside of it that you don't want to use it um, to cook directly over, but you can use a pot and you know you can use it other ways. But the plus side to that is that it has so much resin in it that it makes uh, uh, fire starting very, very easy. So we're going to start a fire today for a couple of reasons. One, we just kind of like a daily fire, even if it's hot, you know, we like to have a fire at night. Uh, and the other reason is because we're going to heat up our water for our shower house on the fire. We were really surprised yesterday how quickly the water heated up. It was just like way before we would even think about it. And that was from cold water. Um, so we're, yesterday was the first day that we tried that. We've just been taking cold showers before that. Um, but we said it was kind of nice and so we decided that we were going to go ahead and continue. So today I'm going to build a kind of like an upside down fire. I'm going to put the bigger pieces on the bottom. That way I can just kind of walk away from it because we still have to uh, finish up with our shower house. I just didn't want to lose this opportunity to get started. So if you want that kind of fire where you can just walk away from it and not have to sit and babysit it, you're going to want to put your larger sticks down on the bottom and you can really start off, you know, wrist size down on the bottom. And then you're going to want to scale that upward 
towards your smaller sticks and your, finally your tinder at the top. Sometimes I'll make a teepee on top depending on what I have uh, you know at hand but you can see here that I'm kind of separating. I've got my pencil lead side stick size sticks that I'm putting over here. Got the larger ones that I'm putting down here at the bottom. And that's what you'll want to do is just separate them into different sizes. Uh, for, I'm sure you guys know, but for anyone that doesn't, you're doing that because you want uh, the ignition. To, the ignition will take place at different stages depending on the size of the stick. So these pine needles, again, loaded with uh, an oily resin, a flammable resin, will ignite quicker than these pencil size sticks. The pencil size sticks will ignite quicker than the finger size sticks and so on and so forth until you you know get up to the larger logs the method behind that is that by the time you by the time you're up to the larger logs you have so many coals and so many embers burning that it will just continue to burn uh, and it can even dry out you know wet wood if you're forced to make a wet wood fire so if you do that you can kind of you know step away from it and not have to babysit it like you would if you just made a teepee and wanted to sit there and, and scale it upward. I don't mind scaling a teepee and just sitting there and enjoying the fire, but sometimes, you know, you have other stuff that you have to do. And today is really one of those times. Now that crack that you hear, that's an indicator. That's telling you that this wood, this wood is ready. So, you want to listen for that. You're going to hear it. If you don't hear that, the wood might be a little bit wet. Might not quite be ready for starting a fire. Uh, we conserve our coal and everything afterwards. So, this fire pit is just inundated with charcoal from previous fires. That we'll just reuse and keep on using until it finally turns to ash. So I've got a little bit of a TP built there. Uh, I've got my fire kit. My fire kit sits right next to the wood pile. Uh, it's in a waterproof bag, so it can just sit there, you know, for years. It can sit there in the environment. Um, it has within it a couple of fire making methods. Uh, it has ferrocium rod, a ferro rod, or some of you might know it as a spark rod. Uh, has wax fireballs that we've done a video on this channel before on, and how you can utilize those. It has dry cotton for tinder and I'll show you on this one just how quickly uh, this dried cotton will take with the ferro rod. Um, it has lighter for ease of use and it has a magnifying glass. I think I might also put in there my uh, I might also put my fire piston inside of it and that would just give me another method there um, but I don't have to you know I have so many methods of fire making here that I can just kind of know that I've got everything under control so what do you think I think I'm very happy with it it's all enclosed now except for the back we're gonna we don't know yet we don't know yet <laughs> I was thinking about maybe um, making like a uh, an all wood limb door mm -hmm. like, like build a, a wood hinge yep. and have it you know kind of swing open there i thought that'd be kind of neat mm -hmm. i thought we could do a uh you know if we built just a door out of tree limbs and stuff you know little twigs and stuff mm -hmm. we could just tie it and then you could just open it that way yep. and kind of loop it around a screw or something yep something very non-formal yep but we'll figure it out uh right now it's it's a lot more enclosed so the breeze won't be as cool. Quite as brisk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but it's good. It's it's nice. I like it. Yeah. So for a, uh, a day where we had planned to help a friend out, mm -hmm. we still got to have some great, uh, you know, communion and some great friendship. Uh, we had planned to put our garden boxes together. Yes. <laughs> still got some great work done. Right. Towards things that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And now it's time. The water's heating up on the fire. Uh, we pulled the potatoes out of the solar oven Yep. and uh, we'll take a shower and go so, eat. Yep. 
<laughs> so from Kelly and I to you and yours, we hope that you enjoyed this kind of vlog style of what we're doing on the homestead. Mm -hmm. Stay safe as always and keep watch.